A bridge too far. Why plans to build a temporary footpath over the River Wharf at Tadcaster now appear to be collapsing. The whole community is behind this project and it seems to be one man uh, uh, standing in the way and I hope he'll think again. We're live from the town as residents wait for the latest news on how their community can be reunited. Good evening and welcome to Look North. Residents from Tadcaster are meeting tonight, furious over potential delays to the temporary footbridge, which will reunite the town until the main bridge can be repaired. Now, the bridge collapsed almost two weeks ago during the floods, which caused damage and devastation throughout North and West Yorkshire. Yesterday, the government confirmed it would provide £3.3 million of new money to pay for the bridge repairs. But floods envoy Robert Goodwill today said it could be held up because the landowner is reluctant to cooperate with the plans for the temporary bridge. In reply, the town's main landowner, Samuel Smith, Old Brewery, says the temporary bridge will be a waste of taxpayers' money, but it will pay for a new footpath from an existing viaduct further upstream. Cathy Killick joins us now live from Tadcaster. It's all yours, Cathy. Thanks very much. Well, that emergency meeting starts in around half an hour. On the agenda, how to link the two halves of Tadcaster now that the bridge has gone. Now, a footbridge has been found that would help to do that, but the problem now is where to put it, as Michelle Lyons reports. This was the moment Tadcaster split in two. The force of the river and debris pounding the stonework was just too much and the historic bridge crumbled into the river wharf. Today, river levels may have dropped, but tempers here have risen. News the government has given three million pounds to rebuild the main bridge and a further 300,000 pounds for a temporary footbridge was welcomed. But a local landowner has told the town's mayor he can't put a footbridge on the land. It was quite emphatic, not on my land. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. And I said, well, on the contrary, as a taxpayer, I have no problems contributing towards this whatsoever. And same with the people of Tadcaster. And at that, uh, he says, well, that's the way it is. The whole community is behind this project, and it seems to be one man standing in the way. And I hope he'll think again for the benefit of the whole community, because it really is something that we need to get in place. So the bridge has been acquired and the money's there to be spent. It's just a matter of gaining permission to build the footbridge on land across the river here. And that's what's causing such frustration for people in the town. A lot of these businesses rent shops off of him. You know, so, you know, it's not, not where's the support from him to the shops. It's saying they can't have the footbridge because it's on his property, you know, he's holding Tadcaster back. I think people are getting quite frustrated about we were getting back on our feet and then all of a sudden we get this block in our way. This afternoon, the landowner told Look North in a statement that they would fund a temporary footpath on the eastern side of the viaduct bridge, which is north of the town, usable for pedestrian and wheelchair users, but described the planned temporary footbridge closer to the town centre as a wasteful proposed public expenditure. However, they did say that if any extra land was needed to extend pedestrian footpaths on the new permanent bridge, they would be happy to give it. Tonight, the local MP, Nigel Adams, has written a letter to the landowner asking him as a matter of urgency to reconsider his decision. In the meantime, residents are still faced with the inconvenience of long diversions to get from one side of town to the other. Michelle Lyons, BBC Look North. Tadcaster. Well, while the battle of the bridge continues, flooded traders have been pulling out all the stops to try to get their businesses back and reopen. And of course, there has been some significant progress, particularly among the independent traders, as I've been finding out. No one can pretend it's business as usual when the high street looks like this. But the shopkeepers hit by flooding are making superhuman efforts to clean up and reopen for the sake of their town. Take Devine's Butchers, for example. They've been closed for 16 days, but reopened this morning to a queue of loyal customers. Yeah, you can see we're well supported again, which I, uh, I never had any, any doubt that people won't come back in. But, uh, yeah, it's even surprised me, really, to be honest. But, yeah, it's great how, yeah, nice and back, back to working again. It's a similar picture at the works beauticians. 
Here on the upper floor, it's business, well, as usual as they can make it. Downstairs, it's a different story, as the dehumidifiers run full pelt to dry the place out. We're managing because we can come upstairs and we can do, we can service hair and nails and feet and everything, but there's a, the salon part downstairs where the elderly people go. They can't get upstairs. So we've just had to make a makeshift salon. Um, it doesn't look very pretty, but I'm sure they're quite happy. We're just here for them, like they've been here for us, really. So you enjoying the session? Yeah, really good, yeah. Perfect. Everywhere you go, there's a determined atmosphere. Take the swimming pool gym. Good and busy, even though the pool is closed. The pump room was flooded and needs specialist repair, but it's hoped the pool will reopen soon. Fingers crossed it will be the uh, 1st of February. That's the week that we're aiming for. Um, it will be dependent on uh, some equipment being delivered and installed um, around about the 20th of January. And then, fingers crossed, everything starts up perfectly um, and, and then we can get the, the swimmers back. If everybody helps, progress can be made. The sign outside the butchers says it all. From devastation to celebration, it is possible. But everyone in the town will have to do their bit. Well, everyone will be hoping that tonight's meeting finds a solution. Maybe a change of heart from the landowner. We'll have to wait and see. But we will, of course, bring you the latest in our newly extended bulletin as part of the 10 o'clock news. Back to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Good evening and welcome to the Late Look North. On the programme tonight, hundreds gather to show their anger at potential delays to a temporary footbridge in Tadcaster. Good evening, our top story. Hundreds of people gathered in Tadcaster tonight as anger grows about potential delays to a temporary footbridge which would reunite the town. Now, the main bridge collapsed during recent flooding. Well, now MP Nigel Adams has written to Humphrey Smith, a director at Samuel Smith's brewery, to ask him to reconsider the decision to prevent the erection of a bridge on its land. The brewery says a temporary bridge will be a waste of taxpayers' money. Spencer Stokes is in Tadcaster now. Tadcaster. Spencer. Yes, this is the old bridge here. It's been looking like that for nearly two weeks. A substantial section of it still lying at the bottom of the River Air. The short term, the River Wharf rather, the short term solution is to get people across the bridge by building a pedestrian link. But to do that, some land belonging to the Sam Smith's brewery would have to be used. Nigel Adams, the local MP, has written to the brewery asking them to release that land. And that was the main subject of conversation. At an absolute absolutely packed public meeting that I attended here in Tadcaster tonight. Frustrated Tadcaster residents desperate to see their town reunited. The money for a temporary pedestrian bridge is available, but the land to build it on isn't because it's part of the Sam Smith's brewery. Tonight there were calls for the brewery to cooperate. Yeah, 72 hours ago we had a very strong verbal agreement is that a bridge could go across. Since then, that person has reneged. The date that your whole fire needs to be addressed back to the brewery because the brewery is the one that is holding this process up. I think there needs to be a temporary footbridge across the river because I think what is in doubt is the economy of the town. We've got the objection from Humphrey Smith today which uh, doesn't help one little bit. Uh, everybody's really fed up about that. It's reassuring in a way, um, as long you know, as that footbridge gets done as soon as possible. This was the moment the bridge fell into the wharf nearly two weeks ago. Since then, people have faced long detours to cross the river. A pedestrian link would offer a temporary solution whilst the main road bridge is rebuilt. Not on my land. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. And I said, well, on the contrary, as a taxpayer, I have no problems contributing towards this whatsoever. And same with the people of Tadcaster. And at that, uh, he says, well, that's the way it is. Tadcaster's MPs will meet with the Prime Minister tomorrow to discuss the town's problems. But many here feel that after two weeks, it's time to stop talking and start building. 
Well, the brewery has told us today that the pedestrian bridge will be wasteful proposed public expenditure. Their solution is to bring back into use a permissive footpath across an old railway viaduct about a quarter of a mile upstream. That's less popular with residents because it's slightly less convenient. And it's also a railway viaduct that's owned by the brewery and has previously been blocked by the brewery around five years ago. On the subject of this bridge here tonight at the meeting, it was suggested it could be rebuilt within the next nine months to about a year with £3 million of funding. Thank you.